Okay, so here I'm putting together my CNC router parts bench top standard machine. This is a three foot by two foot CNC. Uh, first, we'll start with the base. So we have these uh, bench top table axes. This will be the y axis in, in uh, sort of relative computer terms uh, to your models. And then we have uh, three pieces of 8020 uh, extruded aluminum that will be the cross members to hold this level and give it strength. Now these are going in with the sort of slot, T-slot aluminum uh, nuts, and these are sort of the nice ones that have little ball bearings that keep them from sliding around and uh, pretty easy to work with, high quality stuff. So these are going in uh, straight and level. You can go ahead and check them. I did with a T-square as I, as I worked, but thanks to the precision cuts on the aluminum, they uh, pretty much go in perfectly and you have a nice square frame to begin with. And that's one of the most important things is you need a sturdy square frame uh, at the base of the CNC. Okay, next go in these little foot blocks and the threaded feet that you can use for leveling the bed later. So there's four of these and I'm going to assemble those into these little slots here. So you could slide these uh, if you needed to. I'm going to measure those pretty precisely and leave them alone. And then later we'll use a level to uh, adjust, to know how to adjust those threads so that we get it nice and square and level. Now next up goes this gantry. Uh, so this is what kind of holds everything and slides uh, back and forth on the y-axis. So we got these riser plates that go in, and these are going to get a cross beam connected to them that everything else will sort of ride off of. The gantry riser is being threaded into these two bearing blocks and the Acme nut, which is what will move the gantry along that y-axis of the bed when the motors turn the threaded rod. There you can see I'm hand adjusting one of them to get these square with each other and then checking my level there also and putting in this cross beam. Okay, now this is our gantry axis, which is going to get connected to that cross member. Now you can see here I'm using a little wooden box to help me hold the thing kind of close to where I needed to lift and slide it up into to get it started. This would be a good two-person job, but uh, I was working by myself putting this together. Now you see here I'm preparing these little brackets that go in and these will hold the plastic tracks that will hold a bunch of wiring later. And here goes a stepper motor in. So this uses this little coupling called the Oldham coupling which has a little bit of give to it. It's got some springy uh, cuts, little spiral cuts in it so that you don't get backlash and you don't get parts uh, bouncing around, so it sort of dampens motion. And so there's one on each side of these uh, bed axes that drive both sides on the Y axis. And here goes a motor that's going to be what slides us on the X axis for this gantry. Back and forth, left to right. And a little break to play some pinball. That's a little iPad pinball table I built out of extruded aluminum. It's like a little brother of the CNC. Uh, this is the mounting bracket for the tool uh, or spindle. I'm using a router. And I actually had the wrong plate in here and CNC router parts sent me the, uh, the right one, the replacement. So that's going in right now again onto those little blocks that will slide this left and right. 
And this just has the mounting holes to interface with the Z-axis so that it attaches to this gantry plate. And there goes the Z-axis assembly. And a little more preparation here for putting in the cable track. I found it very helpful to have a uh, impact driver with the hex bits and some extension so that I could screw the many, many, many screws in a little quicker than by hand. And this is this plastic track that will, uh, has little tabs that pop open and the wiring will ride along inside there to keep things from getting pinched. Here's the Z-axis motor, that's what will drive this up and down. And now I'm attaching the bracket that will hold the tool. There it goes, that tightens in. And these are proximity sensors going in. So these will uh, give feedback to the controller when the limits are reached so that nothing crashes. So we have a couple of them on either end of both bed axes, the Y axes. We have one on each end of the gantry x-axis and we have one at the top and the bottom of the z-axis for up and down. And now I'm color coding the cables so that I don't get lost when I'm hooking these things up to the controller box later. So one cable per proximity sensor, one cable per motor. And I'll also have the power cable coming off of my router. I just used electrical tape and I made a little guide for myself of which color meant which axis so that I could color code the controller box later and plug them in the right spots. You can see I'm feeding one of those proximity sensor cables in through the track. And then there's a, another track along the side there that you can't see. And that's where a whole bunch of the other controller wire, sensor wire, motor wire goes. You can see I've got my iPad there with the instructions. So there I'm using my box to uh, level, or lift the bed as I level it and screw the feet in place. And then I'm going to use a hammer and a piece of plywood to do the same over on the side there. And now I can tighten those feet into place so they don't go anywhere. So here I'm matching up those color coatings that I had planned out earlier. And now I'll be able to plug in the proximity wires and the motor wires to the controller box without getting anything screwed up. So that's the build on my CNC router parts benchtop standard. And next we'll have a look at the finished machine moving around and maybe even cutting some things once the laptop is attached.